Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the motors on the market at the moment, the DJI, the ZF and all the other motors out there and make a little bit of a comparison but before we do that we're just going to do a quick ride down the hill so you can skip ahead, you look in the in the menu and you'll see where it is otherwise I'm going to ride down the hill and test these good, good years we're riding the Mondraker Crusher RR but we've changed the wheel, we've changed the tyres we know this trail so there's no excuses, the hand does not hurt today so I sh the tyre pressure seems good so I should be able to <laughs> these are the conditions for these tyres, dry almost dusty, not quite there's a lot of grip, I can feel on the lateral edge very nice it's an error, it's me, it's not the tyre of the bike is there anything that stands out? sideways grip and the transition in corners you don't slide at all Whoa. <sighs> love it, look at this, look at this beautiful place the price for performance for these tyres is really good grip and wear characteristics, they've got a nice large carcass, I quite like it I've got a 2.4s on this bike, 29, there's a front version and there's a rear version and they weigh in at about 1400 grams nice robust tyre system, really like it today I'm wearing this new Liat chest protector this channel is supported by Liat so thanks to Liat we can keep making videos now I think that there's been a lot of hype online about the new DJI motor the new ZF motor or I think a lot of people are so focused on power that they're actually forgetting that this is a bicycle to the detriment of the riding experience that's my opinion. Now this has got the EP801 with a new update on it and I have to say it's more than enough power up the trail I just rode up. Right, I mean I was literally almost having to brake uphill with this bike. I have to say, anyway you can see this bike, Shimano motor with its power is absolutely fine up this trail. Honestly I almost have too much so I don't think I'd need any more really. I'm a little confused why you would need more power. I mean there's absolutely more than enough power with the EP801 the hype at the end of the day is all about uh, selling and the biggest problem is is you're going to find it difficult to find these motors on let's call it accessible bikes starting with the MG unit unit from Pinion there's only like three or four brands that have had that so far and it's a very specific system we have also no history about the longevity of those motors specifically in rubbishy conditions so with lots of mud and rain and dust and taking impacts and being abused and not serviced, not touched now they say it just needs an oil change I think it's every 20,000 or 10,000 kilometers but I've yet to meet a motor system that is completely resistant and sealed to the elements. So I want to see and hear from the second hand or the third party retailers, third party service centers to see if that thing is, if that motor is actually working properly. The DJI motor, power, lightweight, but it's 2.5, it's only 200 grams less than the Bosch race motor. So it's not that much lighter. Uh, the battery density of the energy, yes, that's improvement and the bike they've put it on is a headline 19.2 but it's a trail bike, it's not an enduro bike as soon as you up the casings on the tyre, the suspension style, put everything at an enduro level you're talking 21, 22 kilo for a full power bike well it's got very similar geometry to the Specialized Turbo Levo SL and from what I've heard the owner of DJI likes the Specialized Turbo Levo SL so obviously they've created a bike which is very similar the geometry numbers are more or less there the next point which I think is really important and it comes in with the privacy thing is DJI is a Chinese company so the only way I think they can actually make that motor like a safe choice for brands is to divest the company from DJI China to make sure that it is either European or American based company with no data transfer to China because I think that's going to cause some political problems not the fault of DJI not the fault of uh, thing, but just the way the world is with politics so any data has to be contained if there's no data involved and you can just switch it off then I 
probably can't see a problem with it, but the whole point of that motor is also the data capabilities. The ZF motor, uh, a very small compact unit with uh, oil in it, it looks like an interesting motor. I would like to see that motor up close and ride it, and it's on the Raymond, so hopefully I'll have a test of that in quarter four of 2024, so that means October, November, December time. Now my main concern about that is obviously heat. I want to know what is it like to ride, heat capabilities because 90 newton meters in a very small package can cause overheating. The TQ motor is famous for overheating at times in certain climates, not necessarily at this time of day, but in the middle of the heat of the day, you're basically going to be risking overheating the motor on tough climbs with a heavy rider. On a lightweight rider, maybe not. I have overheated a motor, I've overheated the Polini EP3 MX once, but that was when I was using it in the super turbo mode, which was basically not following, you know, peaking at 800 or 1000 watts of power for more than 20 minutes, and that motor, I cooked it and it switched off, so, you know. I want to see these small, small motors and their heat management is a really fundamental point, and some of the brand engineers that I've already spoken to have also voiced their concerns and opinions about that. Batteries is basically where the capacity and the weight issue is and I have to say from speaking to some top battery designers in the world there is no magic bullet when it comes to batteries. We have an, a basically a 20 to 30 percent improvement and we've pretty much topped out now on battery capacity and energy density. It's going to be like this for the next five to ten years. So bike brands have to think ahead. There is no magical battery technology coming from any other direction. So the consumer wants a bike where if there's a problem they can take it to a shop or a service center which it can be looked at without any trouble at all easily locally now these brands have to build a service network so and without a service network it's going to be difficult that's the main consideration when the brands talk to the motor companies what's your service network how quickly are you going to respond and i think that is where the key to getting bike brands on board with these new motors will be. Now I've heard and I've seen lots of comments saying oh you can update them online and with the phone and everything but I just had a Shimano EP8, not the 801, and I updated it, it failed the update and the motor is now bricked, so it doesn't work, nothing, dead, doesn't turn on, so I have to now take it to a Shimano dealer to get the thing to uh, be resurrected. Bosch is a fairly repairable motor once you get past the uh, end of its guarantee period. The Shimano, no, not really, very difficult to repair. And the most repairable motor out there is the Polini EP3 MX. I talked about that in one of my previous videos. And that's one of the reasons I really like that motor. You can uh, repair it. All of the parts are available from Polini or from a dealer. That is fundamental. So you can fix that motor at home and it means it will guarantee its lifespan for at least 10 years. I'd like to know how repairable are the ZF motor and the DJI. We don't want this throwaway culture of mobile phones entering into the electric mountain bike motor market. That's what this whole thing is about, ride in this place. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.